So it's a web-based application and also got the capability to support multiple environments from a single instance. So in this case, it's configured for an instance called UAT, but we got the capability to add multiple instances. So you can go to settings and say add new environment and you can specify something like production and then you specify the SQL instance name of the, of the environment and once you save it, then, then, the, then you can access that environment straight out of the single UI. So in theory, you, should, you can have a one single URL for the whole organization. Uh, and people can access all your environment from a single place. But but you, we got full full flexibility there, so you can have multiple instances to se se separate your test environment and production environment and things like that. So that is a, is a, is a powerful capability. Uh, the another important aspect is like even though it's a web application, we wanted to give like a rich user experience. So that's why we we build the whole application using Silverlight and WCF from the technology point of view. So we don't want to build like a traditional HTML based web application and, and make it uh, and we don't want to affect the user experience. So so you will you, you most of the time you won't feel you're accessing a web application. So it's, it's a rich internet application. So let's go through the things here. So we got the several uh, dashboards uh, in Vista 360. So one of the, the primary goal of Vista 360 is to give visual clues wherever possible uh, to the uh, to the application support person. So you can see here, as soon as the, the person logs in, so you can get a general health of the environment. So it says, okay, there are some suspended instances. What are the number of suspended instances? When the last one was suspended? And also all these boxes are color coded. So, so they're green at the moment because this environment is healthy. Uh, but but if you have something, for example, if the host instance is in a stopped state, then this will turn into red. So you will get visual clues all over the place in Vista 360. Uh, let's dive into applications. So the applications again, uh, we extended. Uh, we can see there are some some minor upgrades all over the place. So in this case, we got the list of applications, and you can see like uh, the number of suspended instances for them, and when the last one was suspended. So, so this is just a test environment. So we, we don't have enough data to uh, show the thing. But once you got it in a real environment, then it becomes super important. You can see what are the number of suspended instances in each application, and when the last one was suspended, and you get uh, properties uh, when you click on click on something. Uh, let me dive into one of the applications. Say, for example, this is a bit of EDA application. So this is the dashboard at the application level. So, so what you are seeing here is a single dashboard for the for the the whole uh, for this this particular application. And again, again, all these things are color coded. So this is all 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 green at the moment because this. The overall application is healthy, and also if you got any suspended instances, then you will you will see the those instances uh, at the, at this level. I think we got already got some. I don't know at what level it has been suspended. Okay, uh, I don't know. There, there, there's some, some some suspended instances, but okay. So so the, so this is uh, basically it gives you like a like a visual clue again at the application level, and you can you can see the general health of the application straight away. And you can query instances at, at this level. OK, I guess, I guess there's no data here. Basically, this allows you to, this is similar to what you see in Bistack Admin Console. So you've got the capability to do the filter, and you can do a, uh, the search on services instances uh, at, at this level. And you've got orchestrations, and you click on them, and then you get uh, you get the details for them. So that's a similar concept for all the artifacts. So you, you can click on them, uh, and then and then and then you'll get a bit more details. So you got, also got a graphical representation of artifacts. So if you you know how things fit together, so where the map is applied, at what level the tracking is applied, and all those kind of things. One of the the one of the the the, the biggest feature of Vista 360 is the, the fine-grained authorization module. Uh, the, the problem with current Bistock uh, server is like you've got two groups, Bistock operators group and Bistock administrators group, and, and you don't have any flexibility there. So what we have done with Bistock 360 is like you you can define your own user access policy. So you go to can go to settings, and there's a whole section called user access policy. So I've already got something pre-configured, so you can choose the environment, and then you can assign 
the permission to either at the user level or you can go and create a something like a, like a custom NT group like this. So you're not restricted just to the operators group and administrators group. So you can go and define something custom like this. Say for example, your BPM team or your, your, your workflow team or something like that. And then you can assign various permissions to, the, to, the, to that user or a, or a group. So in this instance, for example, if I choose this person, Mike Watson, I have assigned only a couple of applications to this person and I've got very restricted access. Like I didn't give him access to any of the application stuff, uh, service instances stuff. I just given him very, very uh, restricted access. And I, I got a uh, I got a window the IE window open with this user credential. Um, maybe this is this is a different user, but but the, the idea is, is the same. So you got a, this is a different user. This is a, so what you are seeing here is a super user. So I, I logged in as myself and I got a super user profile. So I'm able to see everything in the environment. But if you look at the, the other window, the Internet Explorer window, so this is for a different person, uh, Julian Yao, and he got a custom profile. And you can see, he can only see the, the applications assigned to him and, and nothing else. And also you can see that uh, the left-hand side navigation is, is very stripped down. So when you compare to this one, you got so many other things. But here, you can only see the basic things. So this helps to hand over your support to a non disturbed person. So you can customize it whatever way you want it. And so the, 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 the person supporting it doesn't require to have like a real disturbed knowledge. He can only have your knowledge about your applications and, and how to manage it on a day-to-day -day basis. And also uh, the other, other thing is the the, the dashboard is also context sensitive. So you can see the number of applications is only two. And only this will turn red if one of those applications assigned to this person is in a, a non-healthy state. So it's all, it's all context sensitive uh, to, throughout. And also, I didn't give enough permission for this person to do anything in the in the application so you can see he can't start or stop or it, it's it's completely read only view for this person so this person can't do anything here but if i go to the, the super user things on the same application if i go here then he go he, then i got access to do whatever i want so this is very important like if you got like an offshore team or if you got a sorry, external support people maintaining your organization then you can be sure you got completely read only access to your environment Okay, so that's at the application level. And another important thing is uh, we also covered the governance auditing part. So if I go, say for example, uh, let me go and stop this application. Uh, I'm stopping the whole application. So so this is this is stopped now. And if I come to the governance auditing section and click on the applications, you, you can see all this activity. So this is ju just what I have done now. So 1024. Uh, so it, everything is audited in this of 360. So that becomes very important in an in, in an in an enterprise system. And and the governance auditing we we do it at three levels basically. So whatever you do at the application level, uh, whatever you do at the host instance level, somebody starts from stopping a host instance, and also service instance level. So if somebody terminates a suspended instance or somebody resumes a certain uh, resumes a suspended instance so those activities are logged as well so so we cover the three important areas uh, what's what's important in this tech environment so the, so those things are audited okay uh, the platform settings it's, it's again uh, uh, again it got a dashboard at that level and and so one thing I want to highlight is the platform settings is not important for everybody so your day-to-day -day, uh, operation support people they don't need to have access to platform settings most of the time so if you don't want then you can completely remove it so if you go to this person's view you can see there is no access to platform settings so so that makes it really simple for the support person to focus only on the application side of things and not worry about the infrastructure side of things. So the different team can take care of the infrastructure requirements. Okay, the host. And again, you can see there are some, some additional things you can see. So each host, you can know whether you, you can see from this view whether there is a receive handler, send handlers, or orchestrations, all those kind of things. And also we got a dashboard at the, the host level. So when, once you click on the host, then you can you can see like what are the host instances deployed for that host and what's the throttling settings for that for that host. 
And this is my favorite view, the host container view. Uh, because on a proper BizTalk environment, you'll have like a multiple hosts and host instances, and a host is a logical container. So you put a bunch of stuff into each host. So you may be using a host purely for receiving, purely for sending, or purely for tracking, depending on your scenario. But it becomes really complicated to work out the relationship, like what's actually running inside the host. So this host container view tells you exactly like what's running inside this particular host. So, so in this case, you got so you got a bunch of orchestrations, a bunch of receive ports, and a bunch of send ports running within this host. So this is very this is very helpful when you're doing performance tuning or even you're even when you're working on the, the scalability side of your uh, of your uh, BizTalk environment. And, and if you click on the isolated host, so you can see there's nothing there. So it's just a, a bunch of uh, isolated receive locations running on the, this particular host. Okay, so that's at the host level. And the host instance is a, it's a, it's a straightforward thing. So you, you can, you've got the ability to start, stop, and all those things. As one thing important, so you can, uh, when it comes to monitoring, so we have noticed like even in production environment, people keep keep set up uh, host instances in a soft state. So if you don't want those to get in, get interfering with your with your monitoring dashboard or uh, or your alerts, you can choose to choose this ignore for monitoring, and and that will those things will be ignored. So you can see actually like uh, since I stopped the uh, application, it automatically the email is generated. So we'll take a look at it a bit later. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the next thing is a uh, is a BizTalk server. So again, uh, I got a dashboard at a BizTalk server level, and and there are some useful things like you, you can see the, the version number and the, what's the uh, edition you're running, and also it gives you uh, like uh, whether if you're if you're running IIS on this box because in a multi-server environment you may be running IIS on only on one or two boxes. So sometimes people just log into the boxes just to see whether IIS is installed. So so we we just covered it in the UI. And also, this is uh, super super useful when you got like a like a really complicated environment. So if you got, we have seen customers getting like six or eight BizTalk servers, and they provisioned it in a way so they use like a couple of servers for receiving, a couple of servers for sending. And it's similar to the host concept, but at the server level. So this view basically tells you like how this particular server is utilized. So so it works out all the relationship underneath, and it just gives you like a very simple view saying, okay, this is how this particular server is being utilized. And and the best of again, you can you can see the host instances at the the server level, and also you you can get to the event viewer at, uh, of the of the server from just directly from the UI. So you don't need to have all DP access to the server to to look at the, the event viewer so you can you can click on them and and you can you can uh, get the details here okay so that's the bistock server side and a message box it is pretty standard stuff but what's important here is we have also calculated the data file size and log file sizes so in a production environment you maybe want to have a quick look at what's your message box size and and whether it's in a healthy state so if your message box grown up to something like 20 gig, then then you know okay there is a problem and and you can take action. So the, that's one of the reasons why people got access to SQL Server side of things. So just to check the uh, size of the data and log files. So whatever uh, we think it's important, uh, we just bring everything to the UI. So you don't need to you don't need to go all over the place to look for information. So that's the goal of Vista 360. We just bring it to a central place. Okay, uh, adopters. There's nothing interesting there. It just lists you all the adopters in the environment. Uh, I don't think that's a really useful feature, but uh, but it's just for the completeness. We we got it there. Uh, the tracking manager is another important aspect of Vista 360. Basically, the idea behind that is to view the the overall uh, tracking settings of an application in a single view. So you do. In an, in an in an application, you have like a receive ports, send ports, and orchestration, and the various points you can enable tracking. So so it's very difficult if you, uh, to to work out that that's again you need a BizTalk person to go and look for information all over the place to tell you like how much tracking you enabled. So this view basically tells you the the whole tracking information in a, in a single in a single view basically. So you just simply choose the application and then it tells you like how much tracking you enable. So you, it allows you to make a decision basically like uh, okay whether you're 
you're doing too much tracking or uh, you're doing little tracking and also we put a warning saying okay if you're if you're tracking too much then there is a the performance impact with that so so we try to, we try to give you tools to the users so that they they're aware of uh, what are the settings and and what's the impact of those settings in the environment okay throttling analyzer is big topic I'll, I'll just cover it a bit later i want to show the Okay, the, the data section, again, we combined all the data in one place, so you can go to, you can go into message box queries, and, and you can see there is, a, there is some suspended instances. Uh, one thing I want to show you here is the interesting bit is, okay, this, say, for example, I pick up this one, and, and you, the standard stuff, you can see the error information, messages, and all those kind of things. In addition, what you're seeing here is, is the knowledge base tab. So, you know, in some cases, there is a nothing wrong with your application. It's not a coding problem, but it could be a data problem or something, an environment-related issue your support people are completely aware of. So once you diagnose something like that, so what you can do is you can go and put an article. You can use a rich text editor, so you can copy a web link or whatever. I say, okay, we know the problem for this issue, blah, blah, blah. And then you, 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 you build a knowledge base for that particular problem, and then you just update it. And next time, if somebody search for this, and you can see a two little icon popped up saying there is a knowledge base information for this event. So this event, okay, next time when the same thing happens in the environment, so then you don't need to, with all the investment you have made in diagnosing the problem earlier, it's available for you this time, so you don't need to waste your time on your support. Okay, so so that's the, and, and you can res, resume and terminate instance and whatever the standard activities you, you do with the instances. And the important thing is those things are audited. So you, anybody resume an instance, it's, it, it will, it will get, get audited for your, uh, for your reference. And, and we got, a, you know, like the, the, like the full query capabilities are similar to, so you're not missing anything from the BizTruck admin console. So you can build your rich query and then you can query it. Okay, uh, next I'll dive into the tracking data side of things. Okay, uh, this is uh, this is the, similar to the the tracking query in BizTruck Admin Console, but we got something interesting here. So let me pick up this one. So okay, so this is the sample from the SDK BAM end-to-end -end sample. So I just uh, set up that one and I just fired a sample message. So it all starts from this uh, service instance. Okay. So this is the instance, and we got something called a graphical message flow viewer. So I just double clicked on them, and then you can see, okay, this is uh, the, the the BAM inbound, and then it, the next step, it, it went to orchestration number one, and it went to the orchestration number two, and it went to orchestration number three, and from there it went to it went to a final final XML transmit. So this is the standard sample from the SDK BAM end to end sample. So what we have done is, is, is a graphical message flow viewer. We build on top of the tracking data. So this is coming straight off your tracking information. So you can install Vista 360 today, and you can get a graphical representation of your message flow within your environment with zero development effort. So that's what we have done with graphical message flow viewer. And you can you can click on each one of these links and see like, okay, this is this is a BAM end-to-end -end receipt port. This is the location you received it. And you click on this one, and you can see BAM and turn send port, and this is where the is it's a transmitter. And also, you can work out the time. So it started off 21 2016, and it completed off in 21 2018, so roughly two seconds. And similar way, you can click on service instances service instances and get the details of service instances as well and from the from the legend you can you can work out so basic basically there are three different types of messages so messages received transmitted and and uh, to the, the the green ones are basically the messages published into the message box so you can click on them to see where it actually transmitted and the red ones are the, the final outgoing boundaries that's that's outside this talk so it's your external sap system or external uh, web service or something like that Okay, uh, the, again, the, uh, the business activity monitoring. So we got the BAM portal as well uh, inbuilt into the into the Vista 360. So if you got investment in BAM, so you can you can query the, the BAM data straight in this UI. So you can pick them and then you can you can query them. So I don't have enough data here, but the idea is like you don't need to use the BAM portal. So with that that data is readily available within Vista 360. And also again, you can see the data and log file sizes here. So whether your BAM data is BAM database is growing exponentially. Or you can keep an eye basically. Yeah. Okay. I, I, 
I need to rush. I covered only like 40%. Okay, the, the next thing is topology. Uh, again, the, the, the idea behind this is like you don't need to maintain a Visio diagram or a, or a documentation for your environment. So this will dynamically construct your topology. So this is a single server deployment, but if you've got like a proper multi-server cluster, then, then the, this diagram will dynamically, it will show exactly what's your uh, configuration. Uh, so this is very useful, like if somebody wants to take a quick look into your environment configuration, then you can, you can just dive in and, and have a look. Uh, the next thing is a, it's an advanced event viewer. I uh, don't know whether I got enough data. Maybe let me refresh it. Okay, so the advanced view event viewer is again, it is, it's a special event viewer designed keeping BizTurk solutions in mind. So if you look at the BizTurk environment, you typically will have like more than one BizTurk server and one uh, or one or more SQL server. And when, when a message, when there is a failure, they typically the support person needs to log into different servers or they need to have like a, like a cons consolidated MMC console to, to look for events across multiple servers. So what we have done is like, uh, uh, what we have done is like uh, you can you, you you can query across your whole event viewer from a single location. So in this case, for example, this is this query is against your uh, your complete uh, BizTo cluster. So uh, you, you you can construct the query whatever way you want it. So you can you can do something like a uh, event ID equal to something like. Uh, 7169 or uh, maybe I, I don't know whether I got enough data so I'm just going to pick the same thing so some, something like that so so you can you can you can do a construct a complex query and then that will speed up your the whole process uh, and again you can have like a uh, the knowledge base article associated with event IDs as well so if something same thing happens again then then you will be able to uh, you will to see the knowledge base article and, and take a, a, a quick look. Okay, the, the next is SQL Server instance. So again, it's the same concept. We want to avoid the number of tools you use. So in this case, the, the, the typical things what you will access is, is to check the, the health of the SQL job. So those things are available, readily available in the UI. And again, you can see the data on log file sizes of all the databases related to this stuff in the single view. So you don't need to access SQL Server that frequently for your normal, normal standard things like what, what you're seeing here. Okay, and the, the governance auditing, we just covered it already. Uh, the next thing is a, is, a, is a message box viewer. So what we have done is we integrated message box viewer uh, deeply into Vista 360. So for people who are not aware of message box viewer, it's a really useful tool from Microsoft support. Uh, so the, you typically run it and then it picks up all the, you know, all the issues in your environment and produces a report normally. So it will, it will show you what are the critical errors that needs to take action immediately, some of the non-critical errors. So what we have done is uh, we configuring message box viewer is very simple. So you go to settings, configure message box viewer. So all you need to do is point the location where you downloaded it and you can schedule it to run periodically. So in this case, we are scheduled it to run like at eight o'clock uh, every day. So that's why you're seeing, uh, seeing a report here. So the, the background service will run it and then the report will be readily available uh, when you log in. So this is, this is very, very important. Uh, like it picks up a lot of things. Say for example, you're doing a Windows update or something and if it has broken something, then the message box viewer can pick up those things. And, and, and we also got this integrated with our alerting scenario. So you can get alerts, you can configure, say like if the message box viewer raises like five, alert, five critical errors, then you can get the, get the notification uh, for, for those alerts. Okay, uh, I think that's pretty much covered on, the, uh, on this side. And let, let's dive into the monitoring and notification side of Vista 360. So some of the things what you're seeing here is is, is coming in our version 4.0. So there are there are a few things already present in the public release, but we are extending the the monitoring and notification capability uh, to 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 big extent with with this uh, 4.0. The, the main focus for our 4.0 release is to focus on this uh, monitoring capability. So the the, the way it works is uh, you create an alarm basically, uh, and and we got okay. Let me. 
choose a new one. So the first step to get notification is you need to create an alarm, something like you define whatever name you want, something weekend alert for your uh, BPM team or something, and then you, you put the, the bunch of email addresses. I'm not going to fill it out, but just you can put a bunch of email addresses. And we also support SMS, so you can get alerts via mobile numbers as well. And we got two different kinds of alerts, regular alert and then the threshold alert. Regular alert is mainly useful for people like like a managers who, are, who, who own, owns an environment like production and they wanted to get a health status of your environment, say for example, every day at 10 o'clock. So then you can create a regular alert, okay, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and maybe Saturday and Sunday as well. And every day at 10 o'clock, I need a general overall health of my environment. So you can create an alarm. Uh, uh, and then you can you can subscribe to various events what you wanted to see in that alarm alarm later. And the threshold alarm is, is something like when things goes wrong. So you can you can either turn it on you can you can turn it off if you don't want to get a threshold alarm. But if you're also interested in getting a threshold violation alarm, you can enable it. And there are some key properties like uh, you can you can specify how long uh, you, like the, the the situation persists. So you don't want to get notified as soon as uh, things go wrong for in intermittently for like a minute or something. So you can say, if the threshold condition exists for 10 minutes, then just send me an alert. And also you can restrict the number of alerts. So you don't want to get notified constantly for next five hours. So you can say, okay, I want like five alerts uh, to get notified when there is a threshold violation. And also you can say whether you want a notification whether when the, the, the environment comes to a normal state. So that it's when, when things get, fixed so so the alarm is a very general general concept so you create the alarm you put the timings and you specify what type of alarm you want and once you've created the alarm then you go to various sections say for example you go to so we've got two two different types of uh, monitoring for application one is a simple monitoring so that's what you're seeing here so you you pick up the alarm you just created and you just pick up the applications you're interested in, and all you need to do is save, and then you are ready to go, basically. So you, this, your, your start already started monitoring those applications, and also you can specify things like, okay, if there are so many suspended instances for those applications, then please send an alert. So what will happen is once you configure this one, so let's dive into this, uh, okay, this, and you can you can see basically so these alerts are just created during your presentation because I stopped, if you remember, I stopped this. A contest application during the demonstration, and and though and it went into critical state, and you got the alarm straight away. Uh, so you can see there's a summary section which which gives you like a very simple view showing all the health of the, all the applications you are subscribed for, and and the next section will tell you like the, the problems uh, for each individual application. So in this up in this case, for this contest or inventory to supplier, okay, the, all the send ports are in stopped state and the receive port in stopped state. And also you can subscribe to various things like uh, the health of the Bistock server. Uh, I'll just uh, cover it uh, a bit later. So maybe maybe if I go and start that application. So I think this is the one I uh, start. Uh, let me start it. So let it, let me bring it back healthy. So so I just started that application. Okay. So so this is the this is the basic application level monitoring. So that that's that will be. That will cover majority of the customers' requirement. And what we are bringing for to 4.0 version is something called advanced application monitoring. So what we are seeing is, say, for example, let's go to this Contoso thing, or maybe EDI because there's no orchestration. So what we are seeing uh, people asking for is like they wanted an exact state. Say, for example, they wanted to keep this particular send port in a stopped state. And that's what they want. So that's what they classify as a healthy state. So they they are not expecting all the send ports to be in a, in a started state. Uh, just you can see the up alert. Uh, you receive the up alert because we brought the application back. So you automatically receive when the environment becomes healthy. So so what it means here is like okay for this example like I want this this receive. Okay, one well, well, one of these receive locations must be in a disabled state. So that's what I classify it as a, as a healthy environment. But you can see it it turned red automatically because my expected state is disabled, but the current state is is running. So it just so the system detected okay this is not what you're expected, and it will it will notify you straight away when the conflict occurs. So the the same thing uh, applied uh, for orchestration. So you can specify your 
exact expected state. So you're not basically bound to keeping all your artifacts in a, in a running state. So because this is more of a practical approach, like, uh, like a lot of customers have got a completely different requirement. Some of them, they want the host instances to be in a, in a disabled state, some of the host instances to be in a disabled state, and that's what they classify as a, as a healthy environment. So, so we are extending this capability. That's why you got two different monitoring capabilities for applications. And and you, you got we have we have this whole whole thing is completely new to 4.0 release. So you can go to Bistock server, and we are bringing a lot of capabilities. So you can monitor disks now. So you can specify the warning level, error level, uh, NT services. It's a similar concept. So. If you look at it, this is how I configured it. I want these services to be running and these services to be in a stopped state. So that's what my expected state is. If, you, if, if my system is not in an expected state, then just send me a notification. And the system resources as well, so the, the CPU level and the memory level, you can configure uh, the, the parameters. And also the event log, basically. So, so you, you can create a new event log entry, uh, say something like uh, MSI installations or something like that, and you can specify the the source, and and then you can specify the threshold condition. If there are so many errors in the last 30 minutes, then just for this condition, then please uh, email me. So that's what you are asking for. So you, and you can you can configure multiple of them. So you can see the the, the overall flexibility. So you can have multiple event log alert setup and and you can also uh, you can have like an exact state what you want your environment to be and the same the same principle goes to sql instances and and here it says sql jobs so you, you know like uh, uh, some of the the some of the bistock jobs are supposed to be in a stopped state and that's by design and you don't want somebody to accidentally starting it so you can you can set an expected state. I want this particular SQL job to be in a disabled state. If so somebody goes and starts the SQL SQL job, then you will get notifications straight away. And and you got something at the Bistock environment level. So you got host instances, and this is interesting. So this is the web endpoints are basically for your external services. Say you got a bunch of uh, web services, or, uh, or or say so in this instance, for example. I just configured a couple of endpoints. Let, let's say something like, okay, uh, I'm, so, I'm just checking for fun. Uh, I want whether the Facebook is running or not. Okay, and then, okay, so so you can see it it gone to red automatically because it checked Facebook, and I expect a return code is 202, but it's returning 302, for example. I don't know why it's returning, but that's the, the return code from Facebook. So this is not in a healthy state. So so maybe if I go and set, okay, modify existing and set it to 302, maybe it may be okay this time. So you can see, okay. So the so you said you said the expected state 302, and that's what Facebook returned. And and you can see, like, okay, based on your web services return code, you can set whatever the expected return code is, and then that's classified as your healthy environment. So so we are doing the message box viewer again. As I said, you can specify the number of critical errors and number of non-critical errors, and 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 then you can get alerted. Uh, I think that te technology-wise, one thing I want to highlight here is we got a completely uh, plug-in model. So what the, each one of these tabs you're seeing here is is, a, is an external plug-in, and and when the customer can go and write their own plug-in, and they can plug into any one of these endpoints. So you can plug in something at Bistock server level, SQL instance level, or the environment level. So so that's that's the architecture for 4.0. So so that's uh, that's what you 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 will get. And we'll just quickly look at the message. So this one, basically, you can see from the heading. So this is an up alert. So we we brought this uh, particular uh, application back, and then you automatically get a notification saying, okay, the environment is back healthy. Yeah, I think I pretty much covered the 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 demo quickly.